Toasties. I'm Missy, here with my bestie, Johnsy. Hey, y'all. And welcome to our Toasted Shenanigans. What you, what you got over there with your cool purple cup? Uh, let me open up this cool purple cup, because I can't remember the name of it. It is from Midnight Brewery, which is local to here. Um, they usually do, like, live music of local artists yeah. and food trucks, like local food trucks, and it's actually a really cool place to hang out on the weekends. But this is Blood Moon Bliss. It's a blood orange IPA. You've talked about them a lot. I like them. I know you like going over there and hanging out. Yeah, it's pretty good. You want to try it? How happy is it? Um, it's not that happy. It's very orangey. Oh, let me try. I love orange. Ooh, pardon You're the so sounds, far guys. Away now. <laughs> <laughs> pardon the sounds, guys. Leave your wings. Do you actually like this? I. What? I don't hate it. I will say that. Like, I, I don't hate it, guys. Would this be the first thing I go for, though? No. But would you drink it? But, like, if I was, like, two other drinks in that I do enjoy, and this was, like, my third one I was going for, I I would drink it. Hey, guys, that means it's pretty good. It does have a beer aftertaste. That's yes. that typical beer aftertaste. Hold on, guys. We're about to get loud again, handing this back to her. Uh, uh, Got it? Yeah. <laughs> in our old lady rooms. <laughs> Um, it, it is very orangey in the beginning, a mm-hmm. tad bit like sour in the beginning. It's got a good citrus bite to it. It does have a good citrus bite to it. I'd give it a nine. I like it. I wouldn't go that high, but. You don't like beer. I know. But, it, I mean, I, I would drink it. Like I said, I'd, it, it'd have to be also, if it was like really hot outside. So now you can go to Midnight Brewery with me and have a blood orange beer. I could. I do like blood. Jams. I do like blood orange, so that could be also. What do you got? Moscato. No, that's all I have. <laughs> what about the other stuff? Uh, uh-uh. not right now. Oh, I know you wanted to try it. Okay, guys, stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> I know you want to try it, <laughs> but I, I, I'm wait, I'm waiting for some for reasons. Okay, I'm, I'll explain another another episode maybe. All right, but. Yeah, I just have my birth, but so uh, okay, getting real frustrated. Our queen toasty needs needs to help me out. So if you're listening, girl, with the fish eye moscato, I have now checked total wine. Well, Sean checked total wine for me, and it's not there either. Do they at least know of it? I don't know. Sean was there. I had him. So look- it's got to be local. Oops, sorry guys. Maybe. I don't know. Um. So queen toasty, if. Like I said, please reach out to me. Tell me where you're at so I can maybe try to find it. I found it online. I might have to order it, but I have checked one, two, well, now three places. And I know that it's like, oh, you only checked three th- three places. Like, that's not a lot. But, like, my places are getting limited on where I can check. Yeah. I've checked two grocery stores and Total Wine, which has, like, every wine ever. Yeah. So I have two other stores I can check. Of Kroger and Wegmans. Wegmans has a pretty big wine selection, too. Yeah, they've got a very good wine selection. So, so I'm hoping if I go there, I can find it. But I have been on the search for it, girl. I've been on the search. So for today, I do have Barefoot because Sean bought me a giant bottle of it. Or no, he bought me two small bottles of it. And then my sister bought a big bottle. So I have a stockpile <laughs> at the moment. All right. That's fair enough. So it is what I have. I do have a few other others, but like I said, we're we're gonna wait for that. I'm gonna wait for that. Well, who are we talking about then? We're talking about a couple today, guys, Ooh. and this is for our over the sea people in the UK, specifically England, I believe, and no, all of the UK. Um, we are talking about Rose and Fred West. Was this one a suggestion? Mm-mm. This was not a suggestion. This is something I found by accident. Okay. While I was searching for stuff, I don't even know how this popped up, but I was searching for stuff for Amityville mm-hmm. and the case of the DeFeos. Mm-hmm. Rose popped up. And I was like, oh, what's this? Mm. And I was like looking into it and I'm like, oh, I got to dig more into that one. That one, that one's, that was a doozy to just the little synopsis of who she was. Mm-hmm. And then I found out it actually wasn't just her. It was her and her husband, Fred. Mm. Although after digging, and you guys will, you guys will hear a little more. I, I, 
seems like it was a little bit more Fred than than Rose. But let, mm. you ready to get into this one? Yes, please do. All right. So Rose and Fred West were Britain's notorious couple serial killers. Their lust for sex, violence, and eventually murder is what bonded them together. So who are these that made up this corrupt couple? We have Fred. Fred was born Frederick West to Walter and Daisy West on September 29th, 1941 in Much Markle. So we got a Libra. Okay. It was a Herefordshire village. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. And he was from a long line of farm laborers. Okay. And despite the war, Fred's parents had six children, one after another in the span of 10 years, and he was the oldest of the six. Oof. As a young child, Fred was said to have a great relationship with his mother. He was known to be her favorite and was like his little pet who would do everything she asked. There was speculation that his mother did sexually abuse him, which is why he was so favored. Mm -hmm. However, there was never any real evidence on that. Okay. And I debated on kind of bringing that up because in, like, there was, like, a documentary I watched that did talk about the sexual abuse that he encountered. But then when I was reading up on a lot of, like, other things, there was no actual confirmed confirmed proof of that. But it was said that Fred was a cheeky and mouthy child, but that's just how kids were at the time. Overall, it was said that he was, he's always been such a nice boy. Um, Fred was not the greatest student, which resulted in him being caned, which when I read that, I'm like, what the hell is that? You don't know what caned is? I was, it's, I've never heard of that term used, but, um, yeah. He got some lashings. He got some lashings. His mother would go to school to yell at the teacher for disciplining her son, which did result in Fred being bullied and called a mama's boy. Fred's mother was known for not being the most attractive. She's kind of, a uh, homely woman as it was described and fred resembled his mother he was kind of described as looking like a gypsy for a while like he had his teeth were really messed up he was just kind of not the greatest looking person but into his teens he cleaned himself up and then eventually making him himself himself attractive to other girls fred was very aggressive with the opposite sex and would go after any girl he fancied claiming he learned this behavior from his father Fred claimed his father had sex with his sisters with the logic, I made you, so I'm entitled to you. Oh, no. Yeah, but again, Fred was known as a notorious liar, and it was hard to say if his father was actually guilty of incest, and it was never sustained. So again, it was more evident that was like, it was never actually um, proven that there was any of this type of behavior that was going on in the house. I feel like the girls would have said something. Most likely, once he made those comments. You would like to think that. You would. The girls would have said something. And um, I think that's also where the the rumors of the mom being sexually Mm -hmm. aggressive towards him came from him, I think. And that's why it was never really proven that that was a true story or not. Because he was just already, at this point, as a teenager, known as a notorious liar. So Fred did drop out of school to become a farm laborer. And at the age of 17, got into a really bad motorcycle accident, resulting in him being in a coma for a week with serious injuries. He had a metal plate placed in his head, which may have affected his behavior and impulse control, according to experts. Just want to say, not an excuse. No, it's it's not an excuse, but <clears throat> could have made the situation worse. Yes. Later, Fred had another incident that resulted in another head injury. This was due to him sticking his hand up a girl's skirt at a local youth club. Result what the fuck. Mm-hmm. Resulting in her knocking him off a fire escape they were standing on, and he banged his head and lost consciousness. Good for her. Yeah, absolutely. Between the motorcycle accident, um. And this, he had suffered brain damage, which they claim may be the reason for his behaviors. Again, not an excuse. And, yeah. You guys will hear more. 
Between these accidents, Fred, between the two accidents, Fred did end up meeting a 16-year-old Catherine Bernadette Costello, a.k.a. Rena. They fell in love instantly. Rena had a little bit of a background on her in crime. He mm-hmm. had his. Yeah. But she did end up moving back to Scotland, which Fred actually ended up moving on pretty quickly. He was not too upset. Well, he's already coming across as quite the narcissist so that would make sense well was said it was said and i didn't go into too much detail in their relationship in the beginning that they were like heavily in love like they were obsessed with each other but it seems like he also just has like attachment issues where he doesn't get attached in the beginning in 1961 fred was accused of impregnating a 13 year old girl now at this point he is about 20 yeah he's 20 he was born in 41. So at this point, he's 20 years old. Uh, he's in- accused of impregnating a 13-year-old girl who was a friend of the West family. Fred didn't see anything wrong with this, stating, well, doesn't everyone do it? What that was a fuck? quote from Fred. Like, he did not see his actions as wrong. Fred somehow, though, got off from a jail sentence for this. What? Yeah, due to a physician claiming he suffered from epileptic fits, but was convicted of a child molester and a petty thief. And then at this point, he became a total disgrace from the family and was kicked out. And because of that, I do think that they weren't any sexual inappropriateness in their household. No, because even they turned their back on him. For a brief moment. Oh, shit. In 1962, Fred's family did let him back in, and that summer, Rena was back in his life. Rena's record by this point was prostitution and burglary. She was pregnant at this time by an Asian bus driver, which was a problem in their relationship because his family did not approve of her. Yeah, I I wouldn't think so. They did not like her. They did not want her to be with him no. whatsoever she had her background he has his it's just all problematic no, and the, the, the asian culture has very high standards well she was an asian she's scottish well that and just her background alone they would they would say something about that mm-hmm. not necessarily just her heritage but mm-hmm. just she's not bringing anything into the culture except for basically trash mm-hmm well They did secretly marry in November of 1962 and moved to Scotland. His parents thought the baby was Fred's. And when the baby was born in 1963, Fred did write to his parents saying that the baby had died. But they had ended up adopting a mixed-raced child because she was Rena's and the Asian driver. Yeah, you're obviously going to notice the difference. Yeah, so clearly the baby had some features that he could not explain. But Mm -hmm. the lovely little baby was named Charmaine. Oh, I like that name. I know. Even though Rena had been a prostitute, she did not like being a prisoner to Fred's horrid sexual appetite. Because Fred did not want, quote, normal sex. He wanted oral sex. Bondage. Sodomite. According to Colin Wilson, who was actually an author called The Corpse Garden, which is about Fred and soon will be on the topic of Rose. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah. Fred had a job as an ice cream truck driver, which gave him multiple children to abuse. And despite Fred's almost daily infidelities, he was very possessive over Rena and Charmaine. Hmm. In 1964, Rena gave birth to Fred's child, his own kid at this point, Anna Marie. Despite that, Rena and Fred had on-again, off-again marriage for years. Soon, Fred and Rena met Anna McFall, whose boyfriend had been killed in an accident, and at the time, Fred had been involved in an accident with his ice cream truck that killed a young boy coincidentally not anna mcfall's boyfriend it was a younger child uh scared he would lose his job oh also he was actually not at fault surprisingly what for that accident 
<laughs> forgot to throw that in there. Scared he would lose his job, though. Fred was, um, Fred, Rena, the children, and Anna all moved to Gloucester. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced that. Where he did get a job at a slaughterhouse, which is suggested is where Fred developed his morbid obsession with corpses, blood, and dismemberment. Mm. Also, it seemed this is when Fred's sexual perversions became slowly more obsessive. His marriage with Rena at this time became increasingly unstable, which actually ended up resulting in Rena to go back to Scotland without her children because Fred would not allow them to go with her. But feeling miserable without her children, Rena did return to find Anna and Fred living together in a trailer. So again, Fred moved on quickly. Mm-mm-mm. Rena then told Constable Hazel Savage that her husband was a pervert and unfit to raise their children, which coincidentally there were eight sexual assaults committed by a man fitting Fred's description. Oh, what a surprise. I know. In early 1967, Anna became pregnant with Fred's child. She wanted Fred to divorce Rena, but was unsuccessful. And in the result to the pressure and stress of her demands, Fred killed Anna and buried her near the trailer park in July. This is Fred's first murder. His own child? No, Anna McFall. Oh. The woman that moved. Well, that he started. That he got pregnant. Not only did he, did he kill her and his unborn child at this point, he mm-hmm. slowly and methodically dismembered her corpse and buried her with the fetus, oddly cutting off her fingers and toes, which were never recovered. And this would be a ritualistic signature to his future crimes. So it wasn't just a way as to hide identification. He was doing it because that was his thing. I think it was his thing. They There was a lot of theories that this was hiding identification, but I also think this was a thing. Mm. Fred was nervous after Anna's disappearance, but Rena moved back in and Fred went back to his old ways. Fred sent Rena out to earn some pocket change as a prostitute and began openly fondling young Charmaine. Oh, no. Yes. January of 1968, about six months after Anna's death, a woman named Mary Bastholm, I'm so sorry, again, was abducted from a bus stop. It was believed Fred was responsible because in later years he abducted other women in the same fashion. He also had multiple connections to her. A frequent customer to where she worked, where she would serve him tea. He was also employed at the building behind the cafe. She was seen with a girl fitting Anna's description and witnesses say that they did see her in Fred's car. Mm. In February, Fred's mother died of complications of a gallbladder surgery, and in November of 1968, working at a bakery, Fred had become acquainted with Rose Letts, Mm. who would become his next wife and lifelong accomplice. Now, before I start getting into... Sorry, guys. who Rose is because Mm -hmm. now we got to know who is Miss Rose Lutz. Yeah. The story is going to start getting more and more gruesome. So if if, you're sensitive, if what you have heard already is getting a little squeamish and hard, come back next week because it's, it's just going to get more. Okay. Now who is Rose? Rose was born Rosemary Rose Lutz. In Devon, on November 29th, 1953. So Rose is already younger than mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> Fred. Hope you guys got your water ready. She is also younger than Fred. She was born in 53. Oh, and by the way, she's a Sagittarius. If that says anything. 
<clears throat> and keeping me of shit. <clears throat> um, Rose pregnancy while her mother was pregnant with her was a difficult pregnancy and both her parents suffered from mental illness her father bill letts was a schizophrenic and her mother daisy letts suffered from severe depression i think it's funny Jeez. i think it's funny that both of them have daisy as a mother it was a must have been a very popular name at the time i guess so um, Rose's father was a violent domestic tyrant who demanded unconditional obedience from his wife and children. He was known to enjoy disciplining them and seemed to look for reasons to beat them. Because of his mental health, he was not an ideal employee and he had drifted through multiple low paying, unskilled jobs, resulting in the family being very poor. Rose was one of five children. <clears throat> her mother's depression was so bad that she was once hospitalized and there her mother would receive electroconvulsive therapy for her depression while she was pregnant with rose oh no yeah which may have caused prenatal injuries that contributed to rose's poor school performance and bouts of ag- aggression growing up also, Rose was known to develop a habit to rock herself in her cat, or if she was in her pram and it wasn't locked, she would rock so much that the pram would move across the room. Damn. As she got older, she would only rock her head, but she would do that for hours on end. She would rock it so much that it's, it, it would seem to have hypnotized herself into like a semi-consciousness. Mm. Resulting in the nickname Dozy Rosie. Aww. She was not very intelligent, but she had very pretty features. She had big brown eyes, a clear compre- complexion, and attractive brown hair. She did, though, have a weight issue, which did make her the butt of jokes, causing her to lash out and attack anyone who made fun of her. She then became known as ill-tempered and lonely. Not book smart, but she was smart enough to make herself her father's pet. Mm -hmm. Always doing whatever he wished immediately. She alone received paternal affection and escaped beatings. And as well, with Rose, there was speculation that her father was too abusing her. Mm -hmm. Just like Fred's mother was. Mm Mm-hmm. Again, there was no proof, but that was something that was said. It's a little concerning that she's this young and already knows how to manipulate the situation, though. Yeah. As a teenager, Rose showed signs of being sexually precocious, and she would walk around naked after baths and would climb into um, into bed with her younger brother and fondle him. Uh, no. Yeah. With her weight keeping boys and the fact that her father forbid her to date boys of her own age all away, Rose did have an interest in older men. In January of 1968, Rose and the other girls of the community were terrified for their safety after hearing about 15-year-old Mary Bastholm missing from a bus stop in Gloucester. Mary missing was thought to be linked to several other rapes in the area. But Rose was cautious for a while, but then got bored and lonely, which drove her to seek out male companionship. Which, on occasion, an older man took advantage of her, and she did end up getting raped by him. Mm. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Rose's mother did eventually move out of the home due to her father's behavior taking Rose with her. So it's like, oh, thank the Lord. Yeah. She moved in with her older daughter and her and her daughter's husband. Without her father watching her, though, she spent a lot of time out at night. Rose's brother-in-law said that she would carry on with lots of older men, and she even tried to seduce him himself. Rose did end up moving back in with her father, which did surprise everybody because of how much of a tyrant he was. 
but it was said that Rose and her father too had, like I said, that incestuous relationship. However, rumors could not be proven. It does kind of like, from previous, like, you know, researching stuff and whatnot, it does sound like all the characteristics are there. For her, it definitely did. Yeah. For her, it definitely did. Um, The love for older men, the... Dr- she was very rebellious to her father, mm-hmm. but at the same time, she was very... Her rebellious part was like, okay, he said he she can't be with boys. So she's not with boys, she's with men. That and she's like she's, for that sex drive also that young. She's very manipulative. Mm-hmm. Like she does what he says, he doesn't beat her. So I I can see why they're like the rumors haven't been proven, but I do get the vibe that maybe there yeah. was something. So soon around this time, she became intimate with Fred. Is when she moved back home with her dad. Fred was in his twenties while Rose was only a teenager, about fifteen, sixteen years old. Hey, older man, and he liked his young girls. Match made in heaven. Rose's father objected strongly of their relationship. He even resorted in calling social services and threatening Fred directly. But to no avail, Rose was soon pregnant with her first child at the age of 16. She found herself looking after Fred's two other children he had with Rena, because there was a brief moment where Fred was sent to prison for petty theft and fine evasion charges. Mm. And in 1970, Rose gave birth to their daughter, Heather. So now with three children, a boyfriend that seems to always be in trouble with the law, and constant money issues, Mm -hmm. at this point, Rose's temper flared. I can imagine. She had resented having to take care of Rena's children and would treat them very badly. Where is Rena at this point? Oh, okay. We'll find out soon. Gotcha. During the time of watching Fred's children, suddenly Charmaine had disappeared. Oh, God. Rose told her sister that Rena had come to take her, but Rose's temper got to her. Now, Fred was in jail at this time, so his only involvement was when he buried um, his daughter. Mm. When he was released. Rena eventually did come to look for her child and to take her away. At the time, Charmaine was eight. Mm. Fred felt that the only option was to kill Rena. So he got her drunk and strangled her. And in his true fashion, dismembered her, cutting off fingers and toes, and burying her near his first victim, Anna McFall. But this did create a control problem in the relationship with Fred and Rose. Fred, at this point, now has the upper hand on Rose for a while. Yeah, of course. Rose's father did come back to take Rose away from Fred, but Fred would say, Come on, Rosie, you know what we got between us. Mm -hmm. And her father noticed that this upset Rose and Rose outbursts would be, quote, you don't know him. There is nothing he wouldn't do, even murder, end quote. (sighs) So, yeah. yeah. Where they lived, they had a large population of West Indian men. That created an environment for extra income for both Rose and Fred. Rose would invite many of these men to the house to have sex with her for either money or fun. And Fred would watch. He encouraged it. And as stated before, Fred was not into ordinary sex. He needed bondage, vibrators, and acts of sadism and lesbianism to get him involved. So this is kind of a carry on of that yeah, kink, going. kink and fetish conversation we had. Mm-hmm. Uh, he would take pictures though and run them as ads in magazines for swingers. Mm. 
later, Fred and Rose became friends with a new neighbor named Elizabeth Agius. She would babysit for them many times, and one time Elizabeth asked the wrong question. She asked them where they'd been. And openly, they responded that they were cruising the street for young girls who were hopefully virgins. Mm. Fred thought that having Rose with him, girls would not fear getting into the car. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth thought that they were joking, but eventually it was noted that Elizabeth was drugged and raped by Fred. Mm. This guy's a massive fucking dickhead. Yeah. Rose and Fred finally married in January of 1972. And in June of 1972, Rose had another child by Fred and named her May. At this time, they decided they needed a home to raise their growing family and to accommodate Rose's prostitution business. And this is when they moved into 25 Cromwell Street. A very notorious place. It was not much to look at, but the inside was big enough for them, and they would take in lodgers to help pay for the rent. Their first victim was Fred's own daughter, Anna Marie, who was eight at the time. And I'm going to say right now, viewer, 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 plug your ears if you need to. They undressed her and told her that she was lucky to have such loving parents who were making sure that when she got married, she'd be able to satisfy her husband. They bound her hands behind her, gagged her, and Rose held her down as Fred raped her. The pain was so severe that she missed school for several days and was threatened if she ever spoke of this. And unfortunately, this was not the only time it happened. In late 1972, Fred and Rose picked up 17-year-old Caroline Owens and they hired her as a nanny. They promised to look after her while she lived with them to her parents and they ended up taking it as a game to compete on who could seduce her and she found them disgusting and wanted to leave the couple then abducted her and raped her fred told her that if she didn't do what he said he would keep her in the cellar and let his black friends have her and then when they were done they would kill her and bury her under the paving stones of gloucester he's they're both pieces of shit like yeah hell is too good for them She believed him and just did what he told. And her mother saw the bruises and reported it. But the con that Fred was got off, convincing them that it was consensual. Despite Fred's record, the magistrate did not believe that he was capable of such violence. And you're fucking wrong at this time. Fred was 31 years old and Rose was just 19 and pregnant again with their son, Stefan, who was born of August of 1973. Mm-mm-mm. Fred and Rose were friends with Linda Goff, a seamstress who moved in with them. Their friendship carried on for a while till suddenly something went amiss and Linda was murdered. Fred dismembered her and buried her in the pit of the garage and, true to ritual, removed her fingers, toes, and now kneecaps. What the fuck? Not a, not, a, not sure on that one. But when Linda's family came looking for her, they told them that she was there, but she left. And this was only really the beginning What the hell? So they they didn't report her missing or anything? Cops didn't investigate them? Like, she just left. Yeah. So at this time in this area, there were a lot of reports of women just missing. 
that wasn't even linked to Fred and Rose. And it was really common for girls to run away. What year are we in now? It's probably like, what, the 60s? Or the late 70s. 70s. Late 70s? Early 70s, sorry. Early, Early 70s. 70s? Okay. So, after that, later, they abducted 15-year-old Carol Ann Cooper in November. They amused their sexual interests with her until they got bored with her and strangled her, dismembered her, and buried her. And she would join the many bodies on 25 Cromwell. A little over a month later, Lucy Partington was home for the holidays. And on December 27th, she went out to visit a friend and was catching the bus shortly after 10 p.m. But had the misfortune of meeting with Fred and Rose. Sorry, guys. I just jumped ahead. (laughs) They abducted her. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to laugh at that. I am total, total going to interject here. I upgraded to the times. I don't have my notes on paper. If you can't hear the paper anymore. Yeah, I guess <laughs> that's why. The paper anymore. <laughs> and I just pulled like a typical, like, I scrolled too far. So I'm not trying to laugh she at the story. She pulled a Jonesy. <laughs> I guess it. I, I'm not trying to laugh at the story because this story is so. Yeah, this is not one where you can insert any kind of humorous jokes. It's just a uh, very painful, very angry. Um, I, 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 words cannot express how much I hate these fucking two. I know. I know. But misfortune of meeting Fred and Rose. They abducted her. Like Carol Ann, she was tortured for about a week and then dismembered and buried in Fred's construction projects. Fred was working weird hours on improving their home, extending the main room, digging out the cellar. Fred did cut himself dismembering Lucy, which resulted him going to the hospital for stitches. Lucy was reported missing, but at that point there was no ties to her being linked to Fred and Rose, unfortunately. Of course not. They just keep getting lucky, right? Unfortunately. Between April 1974 and April 1975, Teresa Siegenthaler, I'm so sorry, I butchered her name, I'm so sorry, she was 21, Shirley Hubbard, who was 15, and Juanita Mott, who I don't recall her age, all met the same fates as Carol Ann and Lucy, tortured and dismembered and buried in the cellar floor. Bondage has become big for Fred and Rose at this point. Shirley's head was wrapped in completely with tape and a plastic tube was in her nose so that she could breathe. Juanita was gagged and plastic rope tied all over her body in very complicated ways only for her to be able to wiggle like unfortunate trapped animal and a noose. With all this going on, Fred did still have the attention of the police, but not for abductions. Unfortunately, it was only for stealing. Oh, my God. In 1977, a woman named Shirley Robinson, who was 18, a former prostitute with bisexual interests, was a lodger at their home. She developed a relationship with both Fred and Rose. Rose had become pregnant with one of her black clients. And Shirley ended up being pregnant with Fred's baby. Oh, my God. Fred was happy that Rose was having a mixed-race child. However, Rose was not happy that Shirley was pregnant with Fred's child. Oh, I didn't think about that. Shirley thought she could displace Rose, and that was a foolish mistake. Rose made it clear Shirley had to go. And go she did. Seven months after Rose had her child, Tara, in December of 1977, Shirley joined the girls buried on the property. Fred dismembered her and the unborn baby. November 1978, Rose had yet another daughter, making six total children in this fucked up family. During all this, Fred was still assaulting his daughter, Anna Marie, which resulted in her getting pregnant. 
For the love of God. However, it developed in the fallopian tubes and had to be terminated. Thank God. Thank- Sorry. No, thank goodness she survived that. I know that that big comment may piss some people off out there. Well, I'm sorry at this point. Fuck you. No. Yeah, and I'm glad she survived that. Yeah. Because this is late 70s. Yeah, so it's not... There's no just a shot that they give you now. No. In 1979, Alice and Chamber would meet the fates as many of the girls already have with Fred and Rose. She, too, was a teenager. And the children knew what was going on in their home. And knew what was being done to their sister, Anna Marie. But Anna Marie eventually did move away to live with her boyfriend, causing Fred to move his focus onto Heather. Now, Heather would resist and fight back. Good. Causing her to get beaten. June of 1980, Rose gave birth to Fred's second son, Barry. And then... April 1982, she had Rosemary Jr., which, why did you name a girl Rosemary Jr. is beyond me, but that was not Fred's child. Ego thing. Exactly. That was not Fred's child. July 1983, Rose had another child named Luciana, who again was not Fred's, but another mixed-race child like Tara and Rosemary. How many are we up to now? Eight? Nine? Yes, Nine. All like these. Uh, this is so frustrating. Yeah. Oh my God. All these children took a toll on Rose, resulting in her beating the children without reason. In 1986, Heather ended up telling a friend about what was happening to her and what was really going on in their house. Now, that friend told her parents what Heather had said, but that friend's parents were friends with Heather's parents, Fred and Rose. Oh, my God. How and can they be this fucking lucky? This put Rose's life in jeopardy because they ended up murdering Heather. And they told the children that Heather had ran away. But he had his son, Stephen, Stephen, dig a hole in the garden where he ended up burying Heather's dismembered body. Fred and Rose carried on with the prostitution business, but soon got worried. And not about what people thought of what they were doing, but how long they could keep up with what they were doing. And eventually, their luck would run out. I would fucking hope so. One of the girls that Fred raped with Rose's assistance told a friend what had happened. That friend went to the police. Good. And the case was assigned to the very talented detective, Constable Hazel Savage. Now, remember Hazel? Mm-hmm. She was brought up when Rena went to her about being an unstable, perverted father. Mm-hmm. She remembered Fred and his stories from when Fred was with Rena. Mm. And on August 6th, 1992, police show up to Fred and Rose's home with a search warrant looking for pornography and evidence of child abuse. And they found mountains of pornography and arrested Rose for assisting in the rape of a minor. And Fred was arrested for rape and sodomy of a minor. Deep breaths. (laughs) Gotta take a drink, guys. Drink, drink. Yeah. I need a couple of drinks after the story. Mm-hmm. Hazel interviewed the family and friends and found horrendous information of what was going on. She talked to Anna Marie and heard the shocking and disturbing, disturbing story of the abuse she was experienced. Anna Marie also expressed her concern for Charmaine because Anna Marie and Charmaine Mm -hmm. were Rena and Fred's children who Hazel did remember from experiences with Rena she remembered about Charmaine and was like what did happen to that one what the fuck happened to my sister Hazel had all she needed to bring Fred and Rose up on charges of child abuse but she was not satisfied with that 
she needed to go further and investigate the disappearance of Charmaine, Rena, and Heather. Because, Good. of course, also, Anna Marie is like, also, where the hell is my mom? Mm-hmm. She did not believe that Heather just ran away without a trace. The younger children were taken and put into government care. Fred was arrested. Um, Rose attempted suicide by trying to overdose on pills, but she was saved by her son, Stephen. Fred almost got away with it when two key witnesses decided not to testify. But with the disappearance of Heather, Hazel did not give up and held firm on the disappearance of Heather. And after much investigation, felt the rumor was true that she was buried in a garden. So when Rose interviewed the children, she had learned that Fred had threatened them that if they didn't keep their silence, they would end up under the patio like Heather. (sighs) So finally, the warrant was available to search the house and garden, but that was a very expensive and hard task to do. Um, Things did improve, however, when Fred confessed to killing his daughter and human remains were found in the garden. The human remains, however, were not only Heather's that they found. But when Rose was informed, she claimed she knew nothing of this and was sent out of the house when her daughter disappeared. Fred was temporarily released until there was evidence to hold him, but while watching the police dig up the garden, he knew it was only a matter of time before they found actually Heather's remains Mm -hmm. and the others. So Fred told his son that he had done something really bad and would be going away for a while. And Steve remembered that he, quote, he looked at me so evil and so cold. That look went right through me. End quote. Slowly, one by one, the police found the remains of many of the victims in the garden. And to protect Rose, Fred claimed responsibility for all the murders himself. Oh my god. So as they're digging, he's like, well, the jig is up. I might as well say something. And he took all the blame. That's a little surprising. I know. And I'll kind of maybe explain a little bit of that. He was charged for the murders of Heather, Shirley Robinson, and an unidentified woman. Also, they started the investigation of missing Charmaine and Rena. Fred at this point became an open book and proceeded to tell them about the girls buried in the cellar. The police tried to piece all the evidence and line up all the names of the bodies as Fred just basically gabbed away every little detail of what they've been doing. Rose completely abandoned Fred to protect herself. So he does come out and say that Rose is in this with me. Or no, he doesn't. No, he takes all the blame to protect her. And at this point, she ignores him like he never existed. Just shut him out like, I don't know what this psycho is doing. She tried to position herself as one of his victims trapped in his torturous game. However, she was not convincing at all. Bitch. She's manipulative as shit. She probably... More than 70% the reason why all this shit fucking happened. Yes. Later, the bodies of Rena, Anna McFall, and Charmaine were found as Fred continued to cooperate. He did stop when it came to Mary, though. The one girl that um, Mm -hmm. was working in the cafe that gave him tea and stuff like that. The one that caused the fear of other girls. Yeah. He never confessed to that one, though. Must have resented her for something. At the hearing, Fred did try to console Rose, but she avoided his touch, stating that he made her sick. December 13th, 1994, Fred was charged with 12 murders. Again, Rose brushed him off. But he did write to her, stating, quote, We will always be in love. You will, excuse me, you will always be Mrs. West all over the world 
Mm. That is important to me and you. End quote. Now this mm, dickhead motherfucker. On over on the New Year's Day, Fred was had taken all the rest of his secrets to the grave, and at noon, when the guards were at lunch, Fred hung himself in his cell. A plan he made to not be discovered. And the only reason that makes me upset is the fact that you fucking coward. Yeah. You fucking coward. Rose did go to trial on October 3rd of 1995. Not truly for her links to the murders, but for the numerous sadistic sexual assaults. Now, Charmaine... They also wanted to prove, and this is kind of side note. Oops, so sorry. Side note from what I have here. Mm -hmm. But Charmaine was, he was in jail when Charmaine went missing. And during the beginning when they were trying to figure out these, these, trying to connect her, Mm because she tried to play this victim, Hazel was not having that. So they were like, I know that she's part of this. And if they can prove this, they'll prove the rest. And it was Charmaine. And they did prove that Charmaine was murdered while Fred was in prison previously. Okay. Yeah. And that is what really got that makes sense. them to roll the ball on the trial because she almost did not get a trial. She almost did not go to jail until they got that. So Rose did go to trial, like I said, on October 3rd, 1995, but not for her murder, for the murders that he mentioned. But they definitely did also have those numerous sadistic sexual assaults with big key witnesses. The defense made a big mistake, though, by putting Rose on the stand. Because Rose's clear defiance came through clearly. Yeah, you can't can't control her. You cannot. That's a bad move. The prosecution learned to extract damaging information from her by making her angry yeah that's all it would take just poke the bear yeah she'll do the rest yep the most dramatic evidence was a statement though that was given by janet leak leak leach sorry who was called as the appropriate adult witness to fred's um police interviews Mm -hmm. so she was present during his initial interviews as like the witness that a conversation happened um and her statement was that fred had confessed that rose was involved with the murders and that rose killed charmaine and shirley robinson by herself shirley was the woman who was pregnant with with fred's baby fred's baby yeah but that he had made a deal with his wife to take the blame for all on himself Knowing this information that Lin- that Janet had stressed her out so much because she was a witness, she couldn't speak on it. It stressed her so much that she ended up suffering a stroke. Oh, but God. it wasn't until Fred died that she felt that she could finally speak on it. Okay. So she was the big, big key mm-hmm. evidence, basically, that Rose is also a murderer herself. Because Fred said so. In the end, on November 22nd, 1995, the jury took very little time to find Rose guilty of murder of Charmaine, Heather, Shirley Robinson, and the other girls buried at the house. Good. The judge sentenced Rose life imprisonment on each of the 10 counts of murder where she is still today and to serve a minimum of 25 years. Her sentence later was extended to a whole life order sentence by the Home Secretary, effectively removing a possibility of parole. Good. Rose has launched appeals in 1996 and 2000, claiming that variously that new evidence clearing her name had come to light and that the media had prevented her a fair trial. Bitch, get out of here. Both were dropped and Rose remains incarcerated. Now, the home, 25 Cromwell Street, or as most call, House of Horror, as the media would put it, was torn down in October of 1996 and is now a pathway that leads to town. 
Good. That home was just so ruined by what they had discovered inside that they yeah nobody would want to live there no it's disgusting it's very disgusting the whole they both are the place was yeah i'm sure the place was full of like just awful energy and whatnot yeah yeah i'm surprised at how current this is she is still alive today she is still sitting rotting in prison as we speak well i hope she's getting raped just as much sorry and sorry. her lawyer because apparently one thing that did happen is during a lot she did clam up a lot when the investigation was happening and her lawyer is like i feel like she would be better if she would just finally open up and speak there was um in the documentary that i spoke that i watched um because they're on the is on um peacock mm-hmm. most horrible or the most evil yeah yeah that's uh jerry was on there yeah their episode they're on season one Excuse me. i think it is season one episode nine mm-hmm. and that's the one that that is the only place that i did find that they did mention about how both of them were sexually assaulted as children that that documentary I don't care if you were or you're not, though. Yeah. It still doesn't excuse it. No, none of that stuff. Is if true. anything, you should know better. You think? You think? think? I, I just, even to your own fucking children, like, and it, what pisses me off, too, is there's so many people out here that can't have families, yet you're gifted with this large family. And what do you do with it? You destroy it. Like, I just, I I can't, I can't. I'm glad he's dead, and I'll keep my comments to myself because karma's a bitch, but I can live with shitting my pants, so I hope she shits her pants. (laughs) Yes. And she's, I like, I stumbled across her on accident when I was looking up Amityville, and what Mm -hmm. I first found was that they killed their own daughter. And I'm like, oh, that's an interesting one. Yeah. I was not, as I typed... Killed their own multiple daughters. When I typed his and hers. Yeah. Yeah. When I was typing this up, I was not expecting to to read... I can't even come up with the the fucking word. Yeah, you weren't expecting it to go into that much depth. I was not. You would think that, like, hopefully it would just stop there. Yeah. But it it didn't. It just kept on graduating because they they kept on escaping by. They're like, oh, we did it once. We can do it again. With each one, it got worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Yes. Until finally a child went to the police instead of her parents. I mean, I'm not blaming that little kid to go to her parents. I'm not... That she did what she... She still did the right thing. She she did. But the other one just went straight to the police. Probably because she saw what happened before. Maybe. I don't know. But... Either way, she she did the right thing, thank God, because how many many more would there have been in between now and then? Because in between the one girl, wasn't there at least two more? Mm Mm-hmm. So... mm. She's sitting rotten. So... That story is for you, England. I hope she's having a very miserable life in prison. I, this story, I I just, I never had, like, when people were like, well, what's the next one going to be about? I'm like, uh, eh. I don't know much about the, like, the British prison system, but do they have, like, a gen pop? I don't know, but I do know that they, during the documentary as well, they wanted the, the crown to get involved. Why? Because they were, the community was so disgusted at everything that was... They don't, and they don't do uh, death sentences. You know, I don't know. I, I don't never looked in that. Do. I think they probably did get rid of that, but they wanted, they did want that. They They deserve it. Oh, yeah. And then some. Yeah, they wanted, they did, they believed that the crown needed to get involved in this one. This was, that it was that, that hellish to them. Yeah. That they were like, the crown needs to do something about the, like, fuck the police and all of them. This needs to go straight to the crown and they need to do something with this. But, yeah. Well. Fuck Fred Rose. 
Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Kinda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, That's a bad one. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I. I think that's our most what the fuck like case yet. It has us both speechless at the moment. Yeah. Even when, like I said, it's even... got me pissed. Yeah. It's got me very pissed. About very hot at it right now. I know you do. I can see that. <clears throat> but hopefully, all our toasties enjoyed it as much as possible. As much as you can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I said, I well, just. Well, the most fucked up award goes to you, Missy. Well, thanks. <laughs> I'll get you an orange beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just, I, I couldn't even like stop. Though, like, once I started out, I, I, part of me was like, maybe I should find something else, but I couldn't even stop. Like, I was like, someone, everybody has to know that about this at the same time and how disgusting and fucked up other uh, people are. Yeah, I, mm. I wouldn't. Love your fucking kids, people. Please yeah. love your fucking kids. That's, uh. Not like that, though. No, you forget that kind of evil's out there in the world. Yeah, you do. But so unfortunately, much. do this podcast. You get reminded quite quickly and more frequently. Yep. And unfortunately, I believe uh, next episode you're going to be bringing more pissed off anger. To, yeah. To the, so I guess this is my. This is more so like pissed off at the like our judicial system though. Like. Yeah. It's just fucked. Fucked, fucked, fucked. But stay tuned. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to, we're bringing some anger for the next couple episodes, guys. Yeah. We'll we'll try to find a nice lighthearted one to throw in there soon. <laughs> Send us one. Yeah. Send us some ghosty stories. We need to do something. Or better yet, we we could do a listener's tale. Yeah, guys. We've send been us. wanting to start those. We have been wanting to start some some listeners' tales there. So if you guys also have any anything you want to share with us that feels that everybody else should know, uh, drop us a, a message on either TikTok or Facebook or Instagram or go to our website, toastedshenanigans.com, mm-hmm. where you can reach out to us there and drop in those those stories we'd love to have a, a that would be a great way to lighten up the mood that's going to happen because like yeah because i feel like this is starting to get very heavy this is about to get heavy even with yours it's about to get yeah. heavy so well thank you guys um till next time bye, bye.